Welcome everyone to Discussions with the Fashion Masters. My name is Deanna Hansen. I'm a certified athletic therapist and the founder of Fluid Isometrics and Block Therapy. And I am being joined by my nephew, Quinn Castellane, the lead block therapist, VP of Block Therapy, and our very special guest today, Tammy Lapoitevin. Tammy was the very first person to join our Block for Body Worker program and has also completed the Block Therapist training. She has been absolutely integral in guiding me as well in how to create this Block for Body Worker program. So Tammy, I'm just gonna pass it over to you so you can share your story. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Oh, I don't even know where to start. Um, maybe I'll start with when I met you, Deanna, and then fill in a little bit more. In 2015, I had a friend phone and say, there's a lady in town from Winnipeg. She's really awesome. I think you should meet her. And I said, okay, what have I got to lose? I'll go meet, meet this lady. And Deanna and I had this lovely one-on-one -on -one conversation and she started talking about how she uses a block cedar to help people release their fascia. And I thought, this is amazing. This is, this is the piece that I've been looking for. And to give some background information, some history, in 2010, I became a uh, massage practitioner and I used a form of deep tissue massage. And what was so interesting about it was the emotional component. So we really worked with our clients to help them have emotional releases. And once they had an emotional release, then the physical release would follow. And it was so interesting to me to see this connection between pushing someone just a little bit farther to have a big release and watch their pain level drop significantly. When Deanna started talking about how the block release fascia and how you could get into deep areas of the body, it just made so much sense to me. I said, I need a block. I'm gonna get a couple others, got my DVDs. <laughs> and I was very excited, but on a personal note, it was, um, probably the most difficult year of my life. Um, my husband had been diagnosed with colon cancer. The day after my husband had been diagnosed with colon cancer, a dear friend of ours was also diagnosed with colon cancer. I had three kids, two of whom were teenagers. One was almost a teenager. We had three businesses. There was so much going on in my life. I said, I, I really can't do anything more with this, but I get it. Fast forward to 2017, and I was at a place in my practice where I knew I wanted to go deeper with people. I was doing touch for health with them. I was doing massage, and we were having really good results, but there was just this component of I wanted to help them have deeper physical releases, and I was unable to achieve it. As well, I was being pretty hard on my body when I worked with my clients. It was so important to me to help get really deep into their tissue and help them have those physical, emotional releases that I was creating a lot of stress and strain in my body. So I, I thought, you know, I wonder if Deanna would ever consider taking me on as a student and teaching me her hands-on method. And that was in the summertime. I sent off an email and I had the email address wrong and it wasn't deliverable. And I thought, okay, just, it's not the right time. Two months later, I get the newsletter from block therapy saying, Hey, we've created this block for body workers program. And that day I was on the phone with Deanna, sign me up. I'm in, let's go, let's do this. And what an incredible journey it's been since then. Uh, I, I love the program. And one of the thing that, things that really resonates for me about the program is it's not about me and it's not about Deanna and it's not about Quinn. It's about people helping themselves. And something amazing happens when you give people the power to take control of their own health. When you work with them and you know, I spend an hour or an hour and a half, two hours, and we create some good movement. And I say, you know, what I'd really like to see is I'd like to see you working on yourself 15 to 30 minutes a day. 
the change that you can create in your own body in that little bit of time every day is far greater than the change that I can make with someone in an hour, hour and a half, two hours. And don't get me wrong. I love working with people. I love seeing them have those releases and seeing them leave lighter and freer and calmer. But when you take control of your own health, it's very powerful. When you aren't waiting for someone to fix you, you start looking in and seeing how you can help yourself. And there's not just block therapy that can do that. There's what we eat. There's um, how we move our body, how we sleep, the, the thoughts we have. All of that plays into it. But now I have a tool where I can teach people and I can teach them whether we're sitting next to each other or if they're across the world via Zoom or Skype. I can teach them how to work on themselves and how to help themselves get over issues that they thought they would have for life. And that is so powerful. Um, yeah, so that that's part of it for me. I, I really enjoy seeing people become better because I, I don't feel like we have to have this chronic health problem after problem, have a bucket full of medications. I have watched family members have double hip replacements and totally lose their quality of life. And if I can help myself, my family, any of my clients, people I come across prevent losing their quality of life, that's so powerful. And for myself too, you know, we see these lovely stories of people with scoliosis or fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue and the amazing changes, the drastic changes. I didn't have anything drastically wrong with my body, but I had a whole bunch of little things that changed my quality of life. I had migraines probably since I've had headaches my whole entire life. Since I was a small child, I've had headaches but they morphed into migraines after I had a severe rear end accident. I've had issues with my cycle. I have had issues with um, my hormones and, and being prescribed medications to help my cycle, which frankly, for part of the time made me a crazy person. And I had little children that I'm trying to be a calm, loving mom with, and I'm all over the place. When I started using the block, those things started improving a lot. So if I could go back, obviously, I would love to have had that block since I was a child and been working on myself. I haven't gotten rid of the migraines completely, but I see an end in sight. I see that they are becoming uh, fewer. So I'm going longer stretches in between having a migraine. And when I do have them, they are far less intense. And, you know, that migraine pain, it's 72 hours. And if I could just go sleep it off, okay, that would be one thing, but I laying down for me makes some work. So I have to try and just keep functioning. And those 72 hours become all about my head hurting. And I can't think and, you know, any noise my kids make, you know, I'll flinch and that that's a pain I can't control when I get on the block and I find a really great painful spot, I can control that. And by controlling that pain and creating that release, I'm preventing the pain I can't control and trying to explain that to people. Yes, I'm going looking for pain. Why? so that I don't have chronic pain, so that I don't have joint degeneration as I get older. And that's huge to be able to take control of my own health and say, no, I'm actually feeling better than I did five years ago. I'm feeling better than I did last year. I'm hiking every day. Um, you know, I'm, I'm doing things that I thought would become harder to do as I got older and it's becoming easier now. And 
you know, for the first time in my life, my cycle's regular. <laughs> it's crazy, but when your body functions, when it's lined up better and it functions properly, then all these little things become easier. Uh, so there's just, there's so many things that I can talk about with this. Do you want me to talk about my, my one client now, Deanna? Uh, no, no. I just, I just wanted to touch on um, what you mentioned about the pain. And I think that's such a good way to put it because people, when, when, when starting this journey, people generally are coming in with a specific issue. And as they continue on, they realize that other issues are also being addressed as a positive side effect. And what I, what I think is so important to understand, it's, it's not about getting to the end of the road. It's about being on the right path. So yes. for me, and I've mentioned this in past discussions, for three years, I have been undergoing a left hip issue. And throughout the process, I became very aware that it was triggered from an injury that I had on my pubic bone when I was seven years old. So as soon as I uncovered this area and opened up this pain and recognized what I was diving into, I thought this is going to be a long process because it was such an impactful injury right on that pubic bone. And then of course, because I was doing something I shouldn't have been doing, I didn't tell my parents about it. So I hid the pain and I limped around it. And I remember doing that for a very, very long time. So I literally grew from that point forward with this negative postural alignment to hide the pain so that I could still function and not show that I did something I shouldn't have done. So um, it was really neat because as soon as I got there, again, aware that this is going to be a long journey, but it's, it doesn't take me into that fear place because I know that I'm on the right path. And each month that goes by, my entire body is realigning and shifting and I continue to improve. So it's, it's getting less and less and less, however long it takes to be completely rid of the pain. It doesn't even really matter to me because I know I'm doing the right things for my body and that in turn, all of my cells are moving to that proper alignment and we have a lot of cells to look after. So um, I really appreciate you sharing that because it pain is such a funny, a funny thing. It's a dynamic that unless people are actively seeking it on purpose and understanding this process, it is confusing. Because as you mentioned, when you're in migraine pain for three days, there's nothing else you can do except deal with your pain. And it's life altering to the most negative extent because you can't live, you're simply dealing. So the challenges that come with that and the lack of life and the lack of being able to be present with your family and enjoy other things, these are all part of what pain does. So, so to tell people that we're gonna become pain seekers can be very confusing, but I really do want to share that we're not adding pain. We're connecting to the pain that's already there, but that is just deeper than what we are consciously aware. And that's the difference. It's already inside you and it's doing things inside you that you're not even aware of, whether that's creating more of an acidic environment or um, creating more of a range of motion issue. So we're having to continually compensate. All of these things happen because of pain that we're not consciously aware of. And then suddenly it surfaces and now it's in our face for something that we need to deal with where had we encountered it on purpose and dealt with it before it had to come to the surface, then we are basically taking control and we become our own healthcare advocates, which is the point of what block therapy is. Right. It's interesting because uh, we talked in class um, last year about my feet and how my feet are two different sizes. And I've really been working on my feet quite a bit. And I made a really interesting connection for myself, which was 20 years ago when I was pregnant with my second daughter, I sprained my left foot badly. And I didn't realize how that sprain was still with me. And what it did was pull my foot up. So I actually have a lump still on the top of my foot that I'm working on. It's pulled my foot up so that my feet are two different sizes and affected my whole left side of my body, which in turn affects my whole right side. So the chronic uh, SI pain that I've had where my right SI joint will seize up and I can't hardly move, the migraines 
also on the right side, all of that connected to one incident 20 years ago. So now as I work through this uh, unwinding of my left foot and it burns like crazy, but I can feel it changing. I can see the arch coming down to a more normal level. My shoe size is changing so that they're becoming more equal uh, size to my feet. And then I go back even farther. And when I was five years old, I fell off my horse. I stuck my arm out and I broke my arm just above the elbow. I spent 10 days in traction and ended up with my hand paralyzed and I'm left-handed. So when I started school, I had a paralyzed hand and I had to learn to write with my right hand and then switch back. So yes, that's healed, but all of the trauma, the physical trauma for that has been in my body as well, the emotional trauma from that. Being a small child in the hospital, can't move, can't go to the bathroom, all of those things. So working back through the physical, but also working to release the emotional. And as those emotions release, then that physical change stays. If we hold on to those emotions, we release the physical, but it seems that it tends to come back. If we can do the two together, it creates this lasting freedom. And that I was really looking for, for myself, for my clients, for everyone, being able to get through day to day. You know, we've, we've been through nine weeks here of our life being turned upside down and everything being different. And I'm calm. And I attribute that to the fact I've been doing all of this work and I'm breathing calmly. I'm also a spiritual person. So I've been in touch with that spiritual side of me. I've been praying lots and that's been very helpful, but it all comes together to be able to function with everything being so different. Go, okay, that's how it is right now. Move forward. We got this. Awesome. Quinn, is there any comments? Anything you'd like to share? I'm just taking a peek here. So we do have a question. A lot of people are saying good morning. <laughs> a lot of people understand <laughs> that we have to uh, switch to Facebook here. But a question for you, Tammy, um, a little off topic, but did your husband ever try block therapy? <laughs> um, yes. And so <laughs> like myself, he's still a work in progress. And one of the and also, I should add that all he needed was surgical intervention. And so he's been cancer free since 2015. I should mention that as well. Wow. And, and my other friend is also cancer free. So we're pretty happy about that. Um, one of the biggest realizations about my personality is I'm a helper fixer person. And if something's helped me, it's of course going to help everyone else. And so I want them to do it, want them to do it. And I have had to realize that everyone's on their own journey. So my husband does block, not consistently, but he knows if he's asking me for help, I'm going to hand him a block and go, hey, why don't you start here and then do this? Or he'll come and ask, hey, where should I put the block? So we, you know, we all go at this at a different place and he has a lot to deal with in his abdominal area so we're going slowly with that mm -hmm. for him totally totally and even um it, it is different like just from my experience seeing because there's definitely been more females that do block therapy that's just a known fact and there's probably many reasons for that but i've been seeing more males jumping on the block now and it's super exciting. So even my dad, for example, he always knew block therapy was, was the answer to so many things, but it's hard to get yourself to go into pain. Um, and, and that's where you need that change of perception. But having a partner to do block therapy with you is been a, has been a game changer for my dad. So my mom has always been doing block therapy and my mom has been getting my dad to do block therapy every single morning for 30 minutes, one of the all things series classes. And my dad has noticed some of the biggest improvements 
And I am blown away. Like everything changes when you do it. He's able to run and he wasn't like, like sprint without any issues. He's playing golf with no pain. Like he's able to do so many things. So many things are changing. Frozen shoulder has subsided tremendously. So um, I think to get males on the block, you, or even um, husbands on the block, it's having that partner factor. That's huge. And if you can just create that schedule every morning, okay, first thing we're going to do is whatever your morning routine is. But if you can squeeze in 30 minutes of block, that's going to be a game changer. And then a lot of males are going to start waking up to doing block therapy and the benefits because like I've been doing this since I've been 18. And this is something that's never occurred to me. Like, why wouldn't other males do this? I like, I've never felt better before. I ever have a chronic pain in issue or an acute injury, I still know how to fix it. Like it comes down to so many levels. And I just want to touch Tammy on, on the, uh, the feet because I, I had a really bad injury as well. I, I shattered my ankle when I was pretty young, about 14 or 15. And it was last year. I was doing a lot of blocking around my left foot. And then all of a sudden, it looked like I was developing a mass, like it was super painful. It looked like a massive bunion on the outside of my fifth uh, metatarsal. And then after I just kept on working on it, working on it, my entire foot, it was like cramped up like this. And then it just splayed out. So now my whole foot, the structure in my foot has changed. Um, completely. So it is really cool because as soon as you change your foundation, everything up the change is everything up the chain is going to change. And that's something that like, I think we keep noticing more and more as we do this, because you, it's hard to believe at times like, yeah, changing my foot can help with migraines, but no, it 100% can help with migraines. And I suffered with migraines all the time when I was a kid, I get them once in a blue moon now. Um, and there's probably many reasons that can cause a migraine, but doing block therapy when you have a migraine is the only thing I can do. It's either you're in a pitch black room, you can't see anything, but lying on the block and creating pain in a different area will definitely help distract some of the pain. I'm not going to say it's going to take it away fully, but it's, it's been a huge answer for many people who have been doing block therapy. Many instructors have claimed that 50, 60, 90% of their migraines um, are pretty well gone. So yeah. Yeah. Really and incredible. I, I know that that's, that's in my future. And I think, you know, I'd love to be able to say, Hey, I cured my migraines. They're totally gone. That I really am looking forward to that day. Um, but I'm allowed to still be a work in progress. And I think there's power in that as well to be able to say, I'm on this journey too. And, and I'm making progress and sometimes I'm really great and consistent and I can spend a lot of time and sometimes I can't. And that's okay. We just, every day is a new opportunity to make different choices. And I, that's part of the fun. Oh, sorry, Deanna, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I love that you said that because I, I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years now and same with me. We are constantly a work in progress. Gravity is constantly compressing us. The stresses of life are constantly impacting us. So we are all human and we all have an entire lifetime built up into our system that has made us who we are today. And that's what we're starting with. So to expect that we can do a practice for three months, a year, five years, and suddenly be what people would want to say is like, you know, the, the ideal human being, I don't think any of us will ever be that ideal. It's, it's about being on that path and moving toward that ideal, thriving for excellence, not perfection. I, I mean, I, I see all the time now, anybody that's striving for perfection, you're setting yourself up for failure because we can never be that because we are constantly adapting to, to life and, and life is pummeling us with, emotional, spiritual, physical, mental challenges. And the key is that we have a tool to help us manage life and get to a point where we can thrive in life, as opposed to, as you had in past, spending three days in bed, letting your pain take over your life. So I, and, and that's part of what makes me so excited. It's, I, I still have so far to go. I have so many issues 
still to address, but how far I've come excites me because five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road, how much further will I be? And it's never going to end. And I love that. We are, we are just this putty that we're able to mold with the block back to a better place than what gravity and our signature posture has taken us to. And in yoga, they say the goal of this lifetime is to break through our signature posture. And Re referring to what a signature posture looks like, that would be like your genetics. So you're born into a family and maybe bunions run in your family or, or migraines run in your family or whatever it is, but we don't have to give in to our genetics. What we can change is the breathing pattern. And in turn, that changes our physical alignment. It changes the flow in our body with all of our systems. And that changes even how we perceive every moment, because when we're open and spacious, we are given the opportunity to look at each moment as a unique moment in and of itself, rather than resorting to memory and reaction. We want to act in the moment and be present. So it was Eckhart Tolle in The Power of Now where I first read that when we are breathing diaphragmatically, we are, we are living in the moment when we're breathing through the muscles of the upper chest we're connected to a different brain frequency that connects us to thoughts of past and future which is where stress lives so bringing that breath down to the diaphragm brings the brain pattern down to a relaxed phase and it allows us to be more present and that's how we get to enjoy life mm -hmm. and even just touching again on the uh, the whole journey aspect the journey to success, and I think this can pretty well tie into anything, is the most exhilarating. But people don't realize that until they've become successful. So even if that's with your business, um, finances, once you're successful, you realize the most fun was actually the journey to get there, because that's where all the excitement lives. Once you're in the known, you already know, but we're always in the unknown with the body. And that, well, to an extent, because we're always on that journey. So again, that's another thing I love with block therapy. You can always improve. And with the body, you can always improve. There's, there's never going to be a state of just perfection. And there's, that's the point. I think that's the point is to never be there. It's just because once you're there, you're never going to improve. Like where's there to go? There's nowhere else to go. So that's why like, I think so many people are so in love with this because they can get out of their pain or their chronic pain or whatever that initial issue is, but there's still a million infinite other things that you can continually change. And the more you do it, the more it's going to reveal about yourself. And then that's where you just keep going down that extremely fun, exciting path um, to go wherever we lead. The more you do it, the more you're aware, the more you're aware, the more that's going to bring you to um, realizations and more information. And that's only going to benefit every individual. Mm -hmm. Well said. That was Very lovely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so tell me, um, you, you do have a, a specific patient that uh, you've had some, well, you've had many, I know, but some pretty incredible success with. Would you like to share? I would love to. Yeah. She has given me permission to share her story and I, I won't share all of it but it's been very dramatic and she has done a ton of work herself, but we seem to really connect very well. And our connection has created some very powerful changes. She was diagnosed with PTSD in 2005 with severe anxiety, disassociative disorder, <clears throat> hospitalized at times, very poor mobility, chronic knee pain, weight gain, just so many compounding issues. And we've been working together about a year now. She's also done a couple, she's done lots of counseling and also used a couple other things in addition to block therapy and sessions with myself. When she came still struggling with major anxiety, spending lots and lots of time in her vehicle. Uh, she said, today, everything is awake, moving better, little aches and pains compared to big aches and pains. Her knees have improved 75 to 85%. Whereas before she was 
slated for knee replacement surgery, but the weight was an issue. Now she's able to start walking, moving more. Um, she's been losing inches. So honestly, the very first thing we started with was the breath and just connecting her to her breath. And very shortly, she said, things are feeling looser, clothing's feeling looser. And we talked about the 84% of weight loss related to the full exhalation of the breath. So she would sit with the block on her belly, not even laying on it, just sit with a block on her belly and breathe into the block. We started really, really slow. And now she's up to blocking on her own, 45 minutes, about five to six times a week. She's telling her family members about diaphragmatic breathing and had lots of emotional releases along the way made some really big connections and she's learned to breathe through a panic attack and that's huge really being able to control that situation and breathe through it and one of the interesting things that she said was that ptsd can act like a head injury and the trauma can mess up your memory as we have worked through releasing the physical, the emotional has followed. So I'd love to just read what she said word for word, just a little at the end. I can feel and remember. Thank you. Finally, I'm not living in my car, staying home or wanting to stay home. Life is not such hard work. I can relax, learning to let things go. I can relax my brain, go without overthinking, hear music, write poems, some hard bits still to come and body still to be adjusted, but oh, to feel joy. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I tear up every time <laughs> because, you know, to impact someone's life is very powerful. And I, when people first come to see me, I say, and I try not to be too, too down about this, but I say, oh, we do a lot of crying in this room. This is a safe space. This is where we are able to do that hard releasing where it's safe. And then to be able to take a block home and continue that process of releasing it really can be life changing to be able to go from mostly living into your in your vehicle to be able to be part of your family's life again is huge. Thank you so much, Tammy, for sharing that. And I, I love how you, you've brought so many points together here. But with this story, we all start where we start from. There's no rushing. There's no need to spend any more than simply putting that block on your belly and just breathing with it just to get things going. And that alone is the foundation to start making the changes. And then you adapt as you can, as your breath allows. And I, I think that's another thing that people might not understand. They might think, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in too much pain to start a practice like that. How can I lie on this hard piece of wood and um, not feel more pain and how can this possibly work for me and it really does come down to the fact that there's there's no rush we are a frozen container and the goal is that we begin the process of melting and it starts with turning on that diaphragm because that's turning on that internal furnace and from there we go one step at a time and some people might be able to dive in do a 90 minute class right off the hop and no issues. Other people need to start where they need to start. And that's the beauty of the community of the instructors that have learned and gone through the process to be guides for their people working with them and for everybody to continue to recognize and understand that we, we simply need to trust our own process and trust our own breath and go at the pace that we can and there's just no need to hurry. And back on the comment, I think it was you, Quinn, that were saying, not sure why there's more women. Um, I think one of the things is because it takes 
it, it's, it's hard to slow down when, when we're drive, 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 we're the, you know, I mean, yes, women are providers too, but it's, it's in the psyche, right. To, to provide, to drive, to go, to keep moving forward quickly. Like that's the feeling that we have in this world. Everything is convenience based and rushing. And we're trying to get so many things accomplished in a day to imagine slowing down and spending a half an hour, not moving your body in the external way that we understand as exercise and simply lying there and let the breath take over that concept of exercise. It's a challenge. And I think that's another one of the benefits and gifts of this time that we are in is people have slowed down. There's less things to do. So now we're able to turn inward and realize I have a half an hour to give myself breath time, give myself block time, or, or self-care, whatever that looks like for each individual. And there's, as you mentioned, there, there's many ways of looking after ourselves and self-caring. Block therapy is simply a tool. For me, it's more about fascia decompression and connecting to that diaphragmatic breath and whatever tools, whatever processes you use for that, it's all about improving flow. And as long as we have flow in the body to and from those cells, they're going to be doing their job for us. So that's, that's the key with block therapy is to keep the flow in our systems optimal so that there's no cells that are becoming starved, dirty, and forgotten. So thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, please send huge gratitude to your client who allowed you to share that story. I will. Thank you. And, you know, interesting too, even just um, as someone else said to me, you know, once in a while, I like to eat some tortilla chips. And every time I ate tortilla chips, my stomach hurt. And since I've been blocking, I can eat tortilla chips and my stomach doesn't hurt. I mean, and sometimes it is really and truly just the little things in life and making those connections. Why does my stomach hurt? Well, my stomach hurts because it's compressed, right? And it can't work properly. And when we start helping our body to function better, then all these little things that make changes can just make life so much less of a burden and so much more enjoyable, right? We can, we can appreciate those little moments more because we don't have all these other things rushing in on us. And that's huge. Well, and that's not only huge from the perspective of she can now enjoy something that gives her enjoyment without pain, but what else is that saying inside? What else is that stomach organ doing on our behalf now to assist us in our long-term health? So those little things that we perceive externally have huge meaning inside of us and what that means to our overall health and well-being. Yes, very much so. And I often say to people too, you know, even just doing a little something for yourself just get a block. I would rather someone get a block therapy starter program than come spend an hour and a half with me. Because I know that in the long run, they're going to get so much more benefit out of it. And we'll do the good, better, best, you know, best is if we're, we're working together, and you're working on yourself 30 to 45 minutes a day, or you're running through one of the 21 day programs. And really, you know, we're doing assessments and going, okay, you've created this shift. Now let's focus on this. But truly, most people that I come into contact with, they can get a block, they can get a starter program. And the changes that though that program can help them make, and, and we don't know where it's going to go. Like I, I don't know where where this path is going to take me. I know that I'm enjoying what I'm doing right now, but I'm open to new adventures. And not thinking about, oh, I'm going, going to keep, you know, keep aging and then I'm going to retire. And No, like there's other things I want to do with my life and being able to physically be able to do things is such a key point to enjoying life. And I want to hold on to that and I want to help others hold on to that. Quinn, do we have any, any more questions for Tommy? Um, Heidi Hunter had a great comment. Um, please thank your client for sharing her deep healing experience through you. It touched me very deeply. So all, all of these are just so, so powerful to hear. 
Um, because again, um, going back to even last week's discussion, as soon as somebody can, can hear that one person went through something, it gives the other person hope or hundreds, thousands, millions of people hope that, okay, I can get on the other side of this no matter where I am. So yeah, thank you, Tammy, for sharing that. That was incredible. Um, this is another question here. I should know this, but if I am driving and breathing deeply through my nose and I am, or am I diaphragmatic breathing? So ultimately I, I can even just answer this because that all comes down to where you can be breathing through your nose, but you can be breathing through the muscles in your upper chest. Breathing through your, your nose is what we recommend in block therapy. Of course, if you have a stuffy nose or you can't, you can always revert to breathing through the mouth, but it's when your belly expands through that inhalation is when you're connecting to the diaphragm and people who don't release the compression in the belly and in the diaphragm can't really connect to that. So they don't really know. So the first position in block therapy we always teach is the belly position that trains the diaphragm properly. So if you're breathing, breathing through the nose and they're deep breaths and you're expanding that belly as you inhale and you're making that belly nice and small as you exhale, then absolutely you're breathing diaphragmatically. So next time you are driving and you're breathing, just place your hand on your belly. If your belly is expanding as you inhale and contracting or getting smaller as you exhale, then yes, you're breathing diaphragmatically. And I'd like to say too, uh, on that point, when I worked with my clients before block therapy, we did a lot of deep breathing. And I would say, take a really deep breath. And I would try and do things with my clients because it would feel safer for them. So if I'm doing a big deep breath, they feel like they can do a deep breath. And I couldn't take a deep breath. <laughs> and I'd be like, why can I not? Is it my position? You know, but. I realized now after blocking that my rib cage was so compressed, I couldn't take a deep, really deep cleansing breath. And now being able to go, oh, I really can take that deep breath and I can deep breathe in a very quiet manner. It's, it seems like, it sounds like it, it's not such a big thing, but it really is. It's a big thing to be able to keep that body oxygenated and calm and not feel like you're fighting to breathe deep so you can calm down. It just becomes one and the same. You're able to breathe and you're able to be calm. And how lovely because I have had many people tell me over the years that they, they practice diaphragmatic breathing. And so what the concept that I was sharing with them didn't ne necessarily resonate, but the difference is you can still practice diaphragmatic breathing even if you have a compressed rib cage. And what's going to happen is that the diaphragm muscle that we do have available for strengthening will be what will be strengthened. So like if we have a frozen shoulder, um, you know, if I have full range of motion in my shoulder, then I can strengthen this shoulder in its full range. If I only have this much range of motion in my shoulder, I can still strengthen my shoulder in this range, but I'm not going to have this kind of range and it's the release of the adhesions and the freedom in the joint that allows that range to be strengthened fully and completely. So when we're blocking, we are releasing those adhesions in the rib cage that have locked the diaphragm into whatever position it's in. So yes, we can still strengthen the diaphragm without releasing the rib cage and gain some traction However, to release the ribs so that they can expand and contract with the breath as we need and free that diaphragm up fully is a completely different scenario than simply strengthening the muscle to whatever ability we have before releasing the, the, the fascia in the rib cage. So um, just wanted to share that. One other thing too, the difference between the nose and the mouth breathing um, a book, fantastic book, The Science of Breath. It really explains the dynamics of nose breathing. There's these turbinates at the base of the nostrils to direct the airflow into and out of the body. And what we breathe in through the right nostril feeds the left side of the body. What we breathe into the left side feeds the right side of the body. So when we're breathing through the mouth, I kind of see it being like eating a chocolate bar for energy as opposed to eating a really healthy, good meal for energy you'll get the energy right away, but it's, it's not going to be 
the same and integrated into the body as a whole as when we use the right passage for airflow, which is nose breathing providing we can breathe through the nose. So just a little bit of those differences as well. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm just checking here if anybody has any more questions. So yeah, if anybody does have questions, just feel free to type that in the chat here. A lady just said that she received her block today, which is ah, awesome. Nice. Yay! You're, you're going to be able to experience exactly what we're talking about today when it comes to the <laughs> diaphragmatic breath. <laughs> so Tammy, I just want to thank you so much. You have been so instrumental helping guide me with what is needed for that body worker program. And I just enjoyed working so much with you for the block therapist program. Do you have any last comments, insights that you would like to share with those that are listening? I think the biggest thing that I would like people to understand is what I hear sometimes is a cost. You know, it, it costs a little bit of money to get started. And when I look at what people spend money on, <laughs> what their discretionary spending is, I try and help them because I'm a, a fairly frugal person myself. I try and help them see how this little investment can keep paying dividends over and over and over and over in our health. And it's really one of the best investments that you can make in your health. Eat good, clean food, drink water, get a block and work on yourself. And the changes in your body will be amazing. And again, I always like to say, yes, physically we're changing, but that emotional component is so huge to our well being. So as we are releasing that physical, we release the stuck emotions, we have emotional healing, we're not going to be 100%, but to be able to function in our life with joy, with calmness, being present is priceless. So take the time to invest in yourself, time wise, spend a little bit, get started in that program. And then make yourself do it for four weeks take pictures keep a journal and notice the changes and maybe they're small but lots of small changes add up to a big change overall and one other thing a couple of months ago we did our 21 day facelift challenge and just noting how change can continue to happen we chose the top three people that we as a team saw the biggest change for. And then we let the community decide, but you were in those top three before and after photos. And I was blown away when I saw the changes in 21 days that happened to the shape of your head, the lift of your face, the quality of your skin. It was, it was incredible. I actually would have picked you first, to be honest. No, <laughs> you're so sweet. I was actually really surprised too, because I'll tell you, I was not eating the healthiest. <laughs> and, you know, it was in the beginning of all of the self isolation and so much stress going on and you know, sleep disruptions and changes and things. So I was really surprised too. And one thing I have never mentioned to you is. When uh, I was 12 years old, I had a bunch of work done to my jaw and my face uh, through dental appliances. And so there's a whole bunch of tension that's been there since, you know, probably my accident when I was five, but also through that. And I know I like it's changed a lot and I have quite a bit more work to do in there. Eyesight's the next thing I'm working on. Uh, but it, it was really fun. It's the first time I've really been consistent with doing a daily routine of a challenge. And I was very impressed with the results. So thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Anything left, Quinn? Just one more comment. These live talks are so inspiring. So inspiring. Just love them. So thank you, oh. Deb. <laughs> and yeah, it's just amazing to um, have all of you on here and like to have you as a guest Tammy has just been incredible because we've known you for a few years now and and just the changes in you personally 
um, but also with the body worker and the growth of your business has been incredible. So um, yeah, again, like, thank you so much for being here. I can relate to a lot of things that you said today <laughs> and I think that's everything. So we can, I mean, one thing I wanted to say, yeah, yeah. You know, I have lots of people texting and asking, you know, when are you going to reopen? You know, can anyone work on me? And I say, get a block. This is perfect. Right. And, and that in itself is so freeing to not be dependent on somebody else to help you. Mm. Right. Because we don't know what's coming down the road to be able to work on yourself when you're in pain and not wait for somebody to squeeze you in. That's huge. Absolutely. Absolutely. So all of Tammy's links are in the chat here. Um, if you're watching this recording right now, it will be below the YouTube video. So you can learn all about Tammy, her website, her social media pages. If you want to get started with the starter program, follow her links um, in the chat or below. And I 100% agree. Now is the time. Um, if you've been on the fence about block therapy, if you've just heard about block therapy, uh, there's no better time than to start than now. And we'll probably always say that, but especially now because we have so much time um, or more time. So again, thank you so much, Tammy. For joining this has been such a great call and um again we're going to be today we were live on facebook but typically we'll be live on youtube so make sure you like and subscribe to our youtube channel if you have any additional comments after the live call just leave them leave them below and we will address them and thank you again so much for joining we will be here same time same place it's every tuesday at 10 30 a.m central time if we're not on youtube we will be on our block therapy facebook page so again thank you all so much and we'll see you in one week's time bye, bye everyone, everyone.